housekeeping announcement. The powers that be have informed me that if you do not remove your poster today, it will be rolled up and given to the trolls in the basement of Smith Hall for kindling. So if you want it back, you need to get your poster after our final talk in the award ceremony this afternoon. So, okay. I would like to introduce Paul Ramlow, who will be talking to us about dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra in Parkinson's disease. Are they built to fail? Thank you, Kristen. Everyone hear me? Okay. Dr. Wright said, I'm Paul Ramlow, and my talk will be over dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra in Parkinson's disease. Are they built to fail? So Parkinson's disease is the most important neurodegenerative disorder of the central nervous system. Now, it has several different symptoms, but the most con or the underlying theme of them is mo loss of motor control. <clears throat> Parkinson's disease is <clears throat> involves the reduced activity and selective depth of dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra, as you can see here, by the reduced black um, from the nigra region. Now, prior to seeing those clinical symptoms that you see here, you know, the cl classical shuffling of gait and everything, there's approximately 60 to 70% loss of those dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra. Again, kind of looking at this. Now, there's two different forms of Parkinson's disease, familial, which accounts for less than 5% of the cases, mostly gen or genetic and everything else like that. Also, these are the most severe and happen to occur earlier in life. Then there's the sporadic, which has no known cause, and accounts for almost not over 95% of those cases of Parkinson's disease. The only common kind of thread with all of the, um, the sporadic forms is brain aging, and some has been shown to have some environmental toxic effects is causing this. Now, what causes, or why are dopaminergic neurons so vulnerable in the substantia nigra and Parkinson's disease? Well, these cells have a unique autonomous pacemaking activity, as you can see over here in our electrophysiological data. These cells, in the absence of any kind of external input, will actually fire at regular intervals, bringing in extracellular calcium into the cell. This is why there's a necessity for an immediate and efficient mode of calcium handling of that calcium, of the intracellular calcium. Now, calcium has very, is very critical to the cell. It needs to be made in a 10,000-fold gradient from outside to inside across that plasma membrane. This is facilitated for <clears throat> via calcium channels, sodium exchangers, several different other things. But one of the most important um, proteins is the plasma membrane calcium ATPase, which then pumps calcium out of the cell to maintain that 10,000-fold gradient. Calcium also has a lot of other important biological roles, such as release of neurotransmitters, learning and memory formation, synaptic plasticity, induction of gene expression, cell survival, and over, or I guess, unregulated calcium intake will lead to cellular death. As, as I said before, the PMCA, or plasma membrane calcium ATPase, is a critical regulator of that intracellular calcium. Now, previously, Dr. Zadie in her, in her lab has shown that PMCA declines with increasing age and is highly and very sensitive to oxidative stress. Even exposure of oxidative stress to the PMCA for very short intervals <clears throat> leads to a dramatic PMCA inactivation. Higher concentrations will cause a complete proteolytic degradation of the PMCA mediated by calpane. Also, Dr. Zay has shown that when we silence PMCA, a PMCA isoform, PMCA2, we see that it alters calcium handling and reduces cell viability. However, there's no known information on the, positive, on the PMCA in dopaminergic neurons. So in Dr. Zadie's lab, we use a three-prong approach to kind of answer and look at that question with a cell model, an animal model, and the human brain. Now, for, to create our cell model, we use <clears throat> what is it? neuroblastoma cells that we then differentiate to make like dopam or dopaminergic-like we then expose them to 6-hydroxydopamine. Now, this is an analog of dopamine, which is also a PD mimetic. 
we then characterize the biochemical properties of the PMCA. This slide shows the effects of 6-OHDA on our dopaminergic cells. You can see with increasing OHDA exposure, we see an increasing cell death, decreasing uh, PMC activity, and actual <clears throat> less PMCA protein with evidence of proteolytic fragments at higher concentrations. You can also see with exposure to OHDA, we see a dramatic increase in intracellular calcium in those cells. Now, one of the most important things to take from this slide is PMC activity and protein levels are reduced prior to cell death. And this may be due to that dramatic increase in intracellular calcium is cascading and causing cell death due to the reduced activity. Now, since we had a, mo a cell model with OHDA, we then wanted to look at an animal model using OHDA. This work was done previously uh, by Shanisha Williams, a former COB graduate, and Dr. John Stanford at KU Medical Center. What they did was take six OHDA, inject it to the right side of the brain in the medial striatal bundle, using the left side as an interior or internal control. We then removed the brain and separated it into the midbrain, which contains a substantia nigra, the frontal cortex, and cerebellum. We then purified it to neuronal rich fractions and then study what the characteristics of PMCA were. Now, prior to our study now, there's been no characterization of the PMCA in the mouse brain at all, even specifically to different mouse regions, or different regions of the brain. So here in each one of these, we have our different regions of the brain. What we can see here is there's significantly low endogenous PMCA activity and protein levels in the substantia nigra region of the brain, which contains those dopaminer dopaminergic neurons. When looking at the PMCA kinetics, we can see in the midbrain region, there's significant, the Vmax is significantly lower, and the K-act is also higher, meaning it has a lower affinity for its calcium, <clears throat> for what PMCA is mediated by calcium. Now when, those, now, when we compare the animals that have been injected with CXOHDA, we then see a dramatic reduction in the VA max of the PMCA or in its activity with, I should show, no change in protein levels. Now we have a second model just to kind of confirm what we've seen with one PD model and then went to another. This model uses MPTP. Now it uses a different, we're using a different mimetic, which uses a different mechanism of action, and it's actually, used, we inject intraperitoneally. So we're using a whole different kind of paradigm for it. But what we see is reduced act, PMC activity in the brain with no change in protein levels. Also, we want to look for one of the kind of markers for Parkinson's disease, which is tyrosine hydroxylase. In our cryo sections, we labeled for this and saw a dramatic reduction in tyrosine hydroxylase uh, immunoreactivity in our treated animals, specifically in the substantia nigra region. So cell, animal, now we wanna see what it looks like in the actual human brain. This research was done by um, Sidra Sheikh, also another former COB student here at KCU. So we got brains from the National Brain Bank, dissected the substantia nigra, frontal cortex, and cerebellum, purified those into neuronal rich fractions, and studied the characteristics of the PMCA. Also, with the human brain, the PMCA has not been modeled in the different regions. So we wanted to do exactly what we did in the mouse brain and see what endogenously what the PMCA looks like in every different region. Again, we can see that PMCA activity is significantly lower endogenously in the substantia nigra region of the brain, lower protein levels too. So we can kind of see that from the get-go, PMC is lower in the substantia nigra just in the control brain itself. Now we looked at actual Parkinson's disease and its effects on the PMCA. First, as I stated before, tyrosine hydroxylase is a marker for Parkinson's disease. Well, we took all of our brains and just tested the substantia nigra region to confirm that, yes, the clinical diagnosis matches our biochemical kind of analysis, and we do see reduced tyrosine hydroxylase in our Western blotting. What we also see is in our Parkinson's disease brains, each region has a significantly lower PMC activity to that of control. 
But specifically, what I want to show you is almost nearly a 50% reduction in activity in the substantia nigra, which houses those dopaminergic neurons. So the critical area for those dopaminergic neurons has significantly reduced PMC activity. It also has, in our PD brains, we have much <clears throat> redu or significantly reduced um, PMCA protein levels. So bringing this all together, PMC activity and protein levels in the substantia nigra are endogenously low. So from the get-go, these things are already low in the region that is most critical for Parkinson's disease. PMC activity in the substantia nigra and protein levels are further reduced when in a PMC model, a, or a cell model, an animal model, and then the actual human brain. Reductionist activity is more prominent than the reduction in protein levels. So this kind of suggests that something is turning off the MPMCA, somehow the protein is being modified to be less active prior to the protein degradation. And I, as <clears throat> there's lower pro PMC activity, which lead to reduced calcium efflux. Like I said, the PMCA pumps calcium out of the cell. Well, if we have reduced activity, we're not pumping enough or as much calcium out of the cell after or as it goes. So this reduced calcium efflux connected with its hyperactive influx, which is that pacemaking ability. So the cell is constantly firing constantly bringing calcium into the cell, no matter what. It's just doing it, doing it, doing it. Now that we have reduced calcium efflux, it kind of sets it, makes it predisposed for calcium overload. So it's already on that tipping point. It just needs something to kick it over. <clears throat> so even a slight reduction in this PMCA might tilt that threshold over and all of a sudden cascade it into calcium-mediated cell toxicity and cell death. So our studies are the first to show that this defect in the calcium transporter may be a causal in dopaminergic cell death in the Parkinson's disease. So really, you know, what does it all mean? Because it's a lot of stuff. So you have your dopaminergic neurons. They're sitting there in the substantia nigra. From the get-go, they got that pacemaking ability that's constantly bringing calcium in it, not necessarily insulting it, but constantly bringing calcium in, firing, bringing it in, bringing it in, bringing it in. Well, our previous studies have shown that there's already low calcium efflux via the PMCA. So right now the cells are just hanging on, saying to itself, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I'm holding on strong. That's just how the cells are made from the get-go. Well, what I've shown you in the <clears throat> previously Brain aging, oxidative stress, decrease the PMCA. What does that do? PMCA inactivation, aggregation, proteolysis. You're gonna have the intracellular calcium start slowly rising over baseline. It's not able to pump it out as much as that stuff is coming in because that's just gonna be a constant coming in, coming in, coming in. This is working as hard as it can, but you know, you're hobbling it. Well, elevated calcium, really sends a feed-forward response and just cascades more oxidative stress because we have more calcium in the cell. Well, what does that do? Less PMCA. Reduced Vmax, increased K-actin, K-act. That's just gonna elevate the calcium even more. I guess kind of to put this in a way of thinking or kind of visualize, it's kind of an old reference, but if anyone remembers I Love Lucy when she's at the chocolate factory. <laughs> and she's, you know, they're going, they're eating the chocolate, you know, doing it their thing, all of a sudden it goes faster, they can't keep up. They're just in a cycle that can't stop. They're just always at a loss. You just can't keep up with what they're doing. So elevated rising, more, more, more. We're gonna start cascading to a calcium mediated toxicity and the eventual selected death of those dopaminergic neurons. So that's why we kind of propose that they are built to fail because from the get-go, they are just on that tipping point. They're just barely keep holding it together. You know, it's a stressed out medical student just like, okay, this is fine, whatever, yeah, I'm gonna deal with it today. <laughs> well, aging, oxidative stress, we've officially kicked that thing down the, down the hill and it just keeps going and going and going and then leads to death. So that's why we think they are built to fail. So I want to say thanks to Dr. Zadie, Stanford, Shanisha, Sidra, 
Dr. Tyson, Division of Basic Re Sciences, Division of Research and Color Biosciences. And now, is there any questions? And we have time for questions. Can you come down to the mic? Oh, this, that's a very good presentation and a beautiful study. Uh, I'm wondering the MPTP, because I'm not doing um, uh, Parkinson's disease. So the model induced by MPTP is because that MPTP has specific effect on calcium level or specific on the PM, um, PMC. <clears throat> so interesting, P MPTP yeah. um, acts specifically on dopaminergic neurons. Yes. What um, mechanism? It's what's like the mechanism? Yeah, it's like oh, okay, a okay. What's the mechanism? It, um, Actually, my question is messes is, with the mitochondrial F zero. Okay. To where it can pump it out, then that creates more oxidative stress, cascading down and stuff like that. So the MPTP is basically it's a well, MPTP pump. goes into the brain. It turns into MPP, uh -huh. and that is the active form that actually causes Parkinson's disease via the mitochondrial like energetics. Okay, that makes sense. So it's a calcium first. Then damaging the, the well, calcium pump. Well, you have that cascading effect via um, kind of uh, perturbations in the mitochondria. Then that kind of that creates oxidative stress. That oxidative stress acts on the PMCA. The PMCA can't pump out calcium fast enough, and then that calcium increases in the cell. Then you've kind of cascaded down the okay. calcium. That's your data. point. Is any uh, compound uh, has in the field like any compound can specifically bound to the calcium pump, like block the calcium pump, and then can specifically cause Parkinson's symptom? Um, something that will um, bring, like a bind to it and essentially yeah, just keep- Target this pump. Oh, target this pump? Um, no, there's nothing, we're, we're looking at that, something to protect the pump so it, See, reduction in the pump increases calcium. We want to keep calcium at a baseline level. Right, so right. we're looking the, the at- The question is like this. If you think the pump is the causative reason for, for Parkinson's um, disease, mm. then if the pump was reduced, like no, no, some no. compound reduction. specifically, no, specifically the re yeah. uh, affect, I mean, inhibit the pump, pump and then, then that will, can cause Parkinson's, I mean, neuron degenerative no, yeah. and the Parkinson's symptom, that will be very specific no, yeah. to answer the question. No, I, like reduction in the pump yes. causes Parkinson's. So if we kept Parkinson's baseline good, that would be beneficial to what we think staving off Parkinson's. So we, like some of the, uh, our COB students are looking at ways to protect PMCA so we can keep it from being oxidatively insulted or anything else like that so we can even um, actually create more PMCA in the cell. We want to transfect cells and increase PMCA in intracellular. So like when we have those OHDA insults, it doesn't matter because we already have so much PMCA. To, even if we knock you know, a couple of them down, you still got a whole bunch more to keep that calcium level baseline. Uh, thank you, Paul, for sharing your data with us. Uh, um, so since the intracellular calcium concentration is so critical and important in maintaining the 10,000 fold, so what is the uh, critical concentration of the intracellular calcium that kills the uh, dopaminergic neurons because of the non-functional or less functional PMCA? So it doesn't pump out, but it accumulates. I'm just curious because you have an ability to measure the intracellular calcium concentration. Have you ever, uh, you know, look at that? Uh, I'm just curious about that. Not specifically what the calcium concentration is, um, but here, cell death is pretty baseline. Um, about 50 to 100 is when we're really starting to kind of effectively wipe out the cells. Anything higher, I think um, 250 essentially just eradicates the cells. Um, becomes super toxic. So if you look kind of here where it's starting to kind of, you know, head off the deep end, we're having almost a two to three times uh, fold increase in intracellular calcium, whatever that may translate to um, millimolar wise. I'm not sure what those values would be, but I could probably say 
that something around here is when you're starting to reach that threshold of toxic calcium levels. Anyone else? Okay, All thank right. you.